Hi, thanks for joining me today on Soap Queen TV. I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com and SoapQueen.com. Over the last year, I've had many of you ask for a basic tutorial on doing cold process soap. So, this is the first of a series of basic cold process tutorials. If you've never done soap before, I'd suggest you go back and check out the first of the Soap Queen TV episodes. In them, I cover how to do melt and pour soap making. Melt and pour soap making is a wonderful beginner way to make soap. Now if you want to control all the ingredients and make soap the old fashioned way, then join me. Let's explore cold process soap making. Because cold process soap is actually fairly complicated, I can't show you everything you need to know in just one episode. You're going to have four episodes of cold process basics from me, and then if you want to delve even deeper, there's other books and DVDs you can watch to learn even more about cold process soap making. to soap making, I would definitely recommend learning more by reading the Everything Soap Making book by Alicia Grosso or The Soap Maker's Companion by Susan Miller Cavage. Those go into much more depth about safety considerations, how to formulate your recipes, and oil properties. Before you get started on your first batch of soap, it's important that you understand more about lye. Lye is a corrosive substance. Even though you can still buy it at many hardware stores, it is dangerous. Lye is often used in making some food products such as brining olives or doing lutefisk. And it's used in the biodiesel process and it's even used to clean drains. It's also used in soap making. This harsh chemical will eat through organic matter. Check out my science experiment. This is chicken. This is chicken on lye. Any questions? When working with lye, sodium hydroxide, always wear safety glasses. These are special soap making safety glasses I got at Brambleberry.com. Also, wear plastic or rubber gloves. Always wear long sleeve shirts and pants. Finally, work in a room with adequate ventilation. When you're stirring the lye into the water, it does produce fumes. You never want to breathe these fumes in. Here's a number for poison control. Hopefully, after watching this video, you'll never have to use it. If you accidentally get lye water or fresh soap into your eyes, it could cause blindness. Take out any contacts you may be wearing and rinse your eye under cold water for 15 minutes and then contact medical attention. Lye water and fresh soap can be fatal if swallowed. If you do swallow some lye water, drink some more regular tap water. Do not induce vomiting. Immediately call 911 and then the Poison Control Center. If you get lye water or fresh soap on any part of your body, remove the affected article of clothing and then rinse that area of your body under the tap water for at least 15 minutes. And finally, never leave your lye water or your fresh soap in an area that young children or pets could ever get to it. Remember, fresh soap or lye water can be fatal if swallowed. I know all of this information sounds scary and terrifying, but hey, do you remember the very first time you learned how to drive a car? That was pretty scary and terrifying too, both to you and your parents. And now how do you feel about driving a car? With the appropriate tools and safety measures, driving a car is safe. It's the same with soap making. Now I'll show you how to make a lye water solution. In order to figure out the right amount of lye for your recipe, you can use the free lye calculator at brambleberry.com or our specialty iPhone iTouch soap making application. It's easy to use. Here it is. It shows you how much water to use, how much lye to use, and you can customize your recipes. It's time to get outfitted up and make that lye water. Notice I'm not giving you a full recipe here. That's because I want you to learn the very basics of soap making safety before going on, it on your own. Okay. Always add the lye to the water. Never add the water to the lye. If you accidentally add the water to the lye, you could have a lye water volcano that literally spurts all over you, all over your counters, and all over the surrounding areas. Always add your lye to your water. A second precaution, never use aluminum when making cold process soap. The lye reacts badly with the aluminum, causing poisonous gases to rise up from the mixture. Always use stainless steel, heat safe plastic, or in worst, worst case scenario, a wooden spatula. But remember, 
lye eventually breaks down wood, so if you keep using your wooden spatula for long, you'll have splinters in your soap. Finally, never use your food containers for your soap making. Have separate utensils and separate bowls for your soap making. It's just not worth the risk. I have my tempered glass bowl, I've measured out my water, now I'm going to add my pre-measured lye slowly, stirring the entire time, keeping far away from those fumes. Notice how white and cloudy and warm this water is getting. Let's take the temperature. Wow, that is hot. Set it aside and let it cool down. As it cools down, you'll notice it's going to start going clear. You want it to cool down between 120 and 145 before using it to mix in with your oils. There, our lye water is done. That wasn't so scary, was it? Now that you understand how to safely use lye, it's time to go over some of the basic ingredients we use in cold process soap making. First, coconut oil. Coconut oil is solid at room temperature. It melts at 76 degrees. If you buy your coconut oil in four or seven pound bags from brambleberry.com, they come in this boilable and microwavable safe bag. Coconut helps to give your soap fluffy lather. I usually use it at 33% or less in my recipes. Olive oil. You can buy olive oil at the local grocery store. Brambleberry.com doesn't even carry it because it's so affordably priced everywhere. It doesn't matter if you use virgin olive oil or the cheaper pumice olive oil. I've never noticed a difference in my soap. I use olive oil because it's very mild and gentle on the skin. You can use it all the way up to 100% in your soap. Palm oil is commonly used in place of tallow in many recipes. It's a hardening agent in your soap and a secondary lathering agent. It's also solid at room temperature. Working with palm oil has a little trick though. When you're working with palm oil, you need to melt the entire thing down and mix everything together. Do you notice these striations in the palm oil? This is because palm oil is comprised of multiple fatty acid chains that separate out as the palm oil hardens. You need every single one of these fatty acid chains in your soap. So when working with palm oil, mix the entire thing up so 100% of the palm oil fatty acid chains get into your recipe. I love using castor oil in soap. It's commonly used in shampoo bars up to 7% because it helps to give large, fluffy, copious bubbles. But most people don't use it in larger amounts than 7% because after that it goes the other way and starts to make a softer bar of soap. Jojoba oil is actually a liquid wax. I love it in recipes, no more than 8%. It has a super long shelf life and it's renowned for its moisturizing ability. There are lots of other oils that you can use. I've only gone over a few of them. There are so many awesome exotic butters that you can use in your recipe. I usually keep my butters at 10% or less of my total recipe. Some of the great butters that are available for you as a home soap maker, pistachio butter, shea butter, cocoa butter. This smells so good. It smells just like chocolate. Avocado butter, which doesn't smell like avocados. Sal butter. Lanolin. There are other options. Again, check out the brambleberry.com lye calculator to see all the things that you can use in your cold process soap. Now onto the fun part, the fragrances. You can use fragrance oils or essential oils in your soap. Just make sure that if you're using a fragrance oil, that it's skin safe and soap safe, no potpourri and no candle oils. You can also use essential oils in your soap. There's some really great ones out there like pink grapefruit or orange Valencia essential oil. I'm going to discuss fragrance oils and essential oils more in an upcoming episode of Soap Queen TV. Thanks for joining me on today's episode of Soap Queen TV. I hope you learned a little bit about lye safety and about some of the basic oils that you can use in your cold process recipes. Remember, there's more than what I just covered today. So join me next time as I delve further into the art and science of cold process soap making. Until next time, happy soaping. I know all of this information sounds scary and sounds terrifying, but do you remember the first time you learned to drive a car? Well, that was pretty scarifying. <laughs> that was a good word, actually. We should have just kept that. <laughs>